This little thing is the X31 Beetle, a portable SSD drive from SK Hynix. Let's take a look. Before I start the review, a quick disclaimer, SK Hynix did send this SSD for free. However, this did not impact my opinion and my review remains objective and unbiased. Now, chances are you have not heard of SK Hynix. It's not one of those common household names. However, it's a really big company and quite known in the industry. It's actually the world's second largest memory chip maker right after Samsung and the world's third largest semiconductor company. They've turned a revenue of around 30 to $35 billion last year. So it's quite a large company and the X31 is their first venture into portable SSDs. Now the X31 Beetle, and they've called it the Beetle because they attempted to make it look like a beetle. There's even a, an image of the beetle on the uh, box itself. It comes in gold color and it's the only color uh, that it comes in. And it's quite, quite portable, quite small. It's a bit thick from the two edges, but quite small in size. If I compare it to the SanDisk uh, SSD, as you can see, it's way shorter than the SanDisk though it is a bit thicker. But in terms of portability, it's quite portable. I like how it looks and how it feels. Uh, it has an aluminum casing and they say it can withstand drops of up to two meters. They haven't provided any ingress protection or IP rating uh, on this. So I would assume it doesn't have any protection against water or dust. It does come over with a silicone case, which in case you need it, gives you even more uh, shock protection. Now the X31 has rated sequential read speeds of 1050 megabytes per second and sequential write speeds of 1000 megabytes per second. I did run some speed tests and we'll get to that in a bit. It also has dynamic RAM, which is nice to have as a lot of the budget SSDs don't have that. And essentially what dynamic RAM does, it kind of keeps a map of where the data is on the flash memory. And it does have a couple of benefits. For starters, it gives you better data management. It does make the drives a bit faster, but also it increases the longevity of the SSDs as it reduces the wear and tear on the flash memories in them. So I'm happy to see that it actually does have DRAM or dynamic RAM um, on this SSD. This does come formatted as XFAT, and uh, if you're gonna use it on both a Windows and a Mac machine, I would recommend you keep it as XFAT, as both operating systems can both read and write to an XFAT. I ran a speed test on Windows, and I got about 900 megabytes per second in write speeds and 950 megabytes per second in read speeds, which is pretty good. Uh, the same test on a Mac formatted as XFAT, I got about 855 megabytes per second in write speed and about 860 megabytes per second in read speed. Um, if you are going to use it exclusively on a Mac, I would recommend you would format it as APFS or the Apple file system. I ran the same test uh, as APFS and I got slightly faster speeds, I got 920 megabytes per second in write speeds and about 870 megabytes in read speeds. Now in the past, I did do a review of the SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD and the Samsung Key 7 Shield. If you haven't seen that review, I'll put a link over here. And this is actually slightly faster than both of them, which was a very pleasant surprise. Another thing that I like about this is it doesn't run too hot, which was one of the complaints people had about the SanDisk portable SSD. And that was the complaint before all these uh, reports of memory loss that have been happening with SanDisk and SanDisk is only now starting to address that with a firmware update. But aside from that, um, people complained that the SanDisk ran too hot. Uh, I did run a, a 4K render on Final Cut on both of them. And um, with the SK Hynix, uh, I got a temperature reading of about 32 degrees Celsius. Whereas on the SanDisk, that was about 42 degrees Celsius. So uh, this thing runs about 10 degrees uh, cooler than the SanDisk, which was also nice. Lastly, in terms of price, there's a 512 GB model that goes for about $70 and a one terabyte model that goes for about $90 as of uh, the moment I'm shooting this review. Unfortunately, it maxes out at one terabyte. There's no two terabyte option for the SK Hynix. So here are my thoughts on the X31 Beetle. Uh, first of all, I really like the build quality and the portability of this. It's a bit thick on the sides, but in terms of portability, it's quite portable. 
The performance was quite impressive and I like the fact that it doesn't run too hot. Now in terms of pricing, it's slightly more expensive than its direct competitors. For example, the Samsung T7 or T7 Shield or the SanDisk Extreme Pro. Um, it's about $10 more expensive than both. One could argue this has dynamic RAM, whereas both the SanDisk and Samsung don't. Let's put aside the whole memory loss issues with the SanDisk for a second. And also slightly faster. So in a way, I would understand the slight premium. Uh, however, keep an eye. Uh, they do have some coupons sometimes or discounts. I will put a link in the description to the product page of the SK Hynix. And um, yeah, that's, that's all for now. Uh, definitely recommend it. And I, I have been running Final Cut Pro for a while off of this SSD and uh, there's absolutely no issues. It's blazing fast, um, no issues in editing or buffering or whatnot. Uh, runs perfectly smooth. And um, yeah, I would recommend this. Let me know in the comment section what you think. And as always, if you like the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel as this encourages me to continue producing content. Until next time, cheers.